Greetings, church family. Cecil Sanders here with you for our Wednesday evening uh, devotional and prayer time. In a few minutes, we'll be looking at Psalm 33, if you want to find your Bible or device to be following along. By the way, if you do know a senior adult that needs help with technology, would you do your best to help them get online with us? I know they would really appreciate it, and we want to certainly be loving our neighbors, looking out for our senior adults. I want to remind you, church family, that Sunday morning, March 29th, we'll be worshiping together online. Uh, you'll find that on our website or on our Facebook page, and we aim to have that ready for you at about 9 o'clock uh, Sunday morning. Also want to encourage you to keep using the hashtag FBCHShines on your posts. You've done a great job with that. It's great seeing all your houses uh, lit up and your crosses. That's excellent. And we'll also tomorrow be giving you a new hashtag FBCHShines challenge. So be looking for that. I want to encourage you and thank you for your continued giving. Uh, we really appreciate that, church family. Again, you can do that by regular mail or you can give online. Or we do now have the uh, Dropbox installed here at the church office for you to use. You'll find that Dropbox on the ramp entrance to the church office uh, on the door on the left. You can just pull it open and insert your envelope there. Also, just encourage you to uh, continue to sh share these videos. That really helps us uh, get the word out. So uh, please uh, hit share uh, and post that. And then I just want to tell you how thankful I am for our church staff, our our ladies and our pastors uh, doing a great job all the way around in keeping our church ministry flowing well. And we are so blessed here at First Baptist. All right, church family, we want to join together in Psalm 33 for a few minutes and just walk through this passage. I found it quite encouraging, particularly in the times in which we live. So if you'll join me, we'll start in verse 1. The psalmist writes, Sing for joy in the Lord, O you righteous ones. Praise is becoming to the upright. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Sing praises to Him with a harp of ten strings. Sing to Him a new song. Play skillfully with a shout of joy. Don't you like it how the, the psalmist begins with praise and worship? If you were with us yesterday for our devotional in Deuteronomy 12, we, we saw that God Himself is our praise. Church family, we know that that God has always been, is now, and will forever be the only one worthy of our worship and praise. Church family, God has gone nowhere. He is firmly enthroned as King of the universe, and He deserves our worship and our praise. That is a great place for us to start. So I just encourage you with the words of the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, you heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. It's great to begin with praise. Now let's keep, let's keep moving in verse 4. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all His work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the loving kindness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth, all their host. He gathered the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Church family, we just need to be in awe of our God. Look what he has done. Whenever he speaks and whenever he acts, it's firm and it is sure. All it took was the words from his mouth to create the heavens and the earth and the streams and the trees and the fields and all creatures, including you and me. And whatever God says, it stands. And whatever he does, it's firm. Not so much with you and me. I mean, we make our plans, we speak our words, but many times they're fairly fragile and flimsy. Just consider this week. How many of you had planned to be doing something entirely different than what you're doing now? Some of you planned to be out of town on spring break this week. What happened to those plans? They didn't stand, did they? But we know that our God's plans and our God's words are firm and established. He spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Now, check out verse 10 and verse 11. 
The Lord nullifies the counsel of the nations. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart from generation to generation. Isn't it fascinating, church family, that with just a small microorganism, our sovereign God has allowed the, the world and the plans of the nations and the peoples to be frustrated. I mean, look, borders of countries are closed. Uh, government leaders are scrambling, trying to find help and solutions. And even that great uh, international gathering every four years of nations around the world, the Olympics in Tokyo, they've been postponed till at least next year. Our God is firmly enthroned and He is large and in charge. And whatever He pleases, He does. And we should be in awe of Him and give Him worship. Then we move to verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom He has chosen for His inheritance. The Lord looks from heavens and He sees all the sons of men. From His dwelling place He looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all, he understands all their works. Now, church family, we're not the nation of Israel, but we are the people of God, and we are so blessed to belong to him. And we see in this passage, the psalmist tells us that he's looking out for us. He sees all the sons of men. He looks out from his heavens, and he sees all inhabitants of the earth. Friends, God knows exactly what struggles we're facing, the circumstances we're in, he knows every emotion we're feeling, every frustration we may have, even the despair we might have, the uncertainty. He knows, He's looking out for us, He's taking care of us, and He loves us. And then we move in verse 16 and following to our hope. First of all, the psalmist tells us what we don't hope, what we don't put our trust in. Verse 16, the king is not saved by a mighty army, a horse is, not, is a false hope for victory, nor does it deliver anyone by its great strength. Church family, we don't look to man-made things to give us hope and security and trust. Uh, the psalmist says, you know, the horse is false hope. We don't look to kings and armies. And even today, we don't need to be looking to leaders in Washington or to the stock market or to medical scientists for, for our hope. I mean, God may use all of those things, but those are not our hope. God alone is our hope. And the psalmist continues, Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear Him, on those who hope, there's that word, hope for His loving kindness, to deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. Our soul hopes or waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart rejoices in Him, verse 21, because we trust in His holy name. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, according as we have hoped in you. Church family, all our hope needs to be in the Lord. He is firmly enthroned as King of the universe. He is in charge. He's looking out for us. Let's not hope in man-made things. Let's hope in Him alone. Church family, this is a beautiful, encouraging psalm for us in these times, and I trust these words bring hope to your heart. We need to be a people of hope. I was privileged today, church family, to participate in a statewide online uh, prayer meeting. Over 400 pastors from across the state of Alabama uh, joined together uh, we were hosted by our Alabama Baptist State Convention and Dr. Rick Lance. And Dr. Lance encouraged us to pray, and we prayed together through the acrostic hope. Now, hope was that theme from the uh, Psalm 33 that we just uh, studied together. Our hope is in the Lord. So I'd like us as a church family now to pray through the acrostic hope. And each of the four letters, H-O-P-E, uh, stands for things that we can pray for. So these will be coming up on your screen uh, to help you remember and to help you pray. First of all, H in the word hope stands for health. Uh, we want to see the health of all peoples. Uh, those who are well, we, we pray that God would continue to keep us well. We want to pray for those who are sick. 
Uh, we want to pray for those who might be susceptible to, to getting the virus. And we also want to pray for those who are caregivers and medical staff of those who are sick. So we'll pray for, uh, for people's health. Uh, the O in the acrostic stands for opportunities. As you can imagine, in this uh, strange, new, uncertain world, uh, there are many, many opportunities uh, for us to love our neighbor and to serve others in the name of Christ. So, church family, I just encourage you to look around you. Where do you see needs? And would you pray about how God might want to use you in meeting those needs uh, in Jesus' name? For instance, uh, do you see a need uh, in your neighborhood or in your community for uh, helping with child care as parents uh, need, need that help? Uh, do you see a need in your community like with the snacks that we're taking to uh, help with the feeding program next week? Many of you have done that, and thank you for that. Uh, do you see other needs in the community? Uh, like um, people who are in nursing homes that might need you to, or assisted living homes, just maybe go by and call them and, and talk to them through their window. Ways that you can minister. Uh, third, the P stands for people, particularly people who are leading us. We need to pray for our president and our vice president, our senators, our congressmen, our governor, uh, state leaders, local leaders, our mayor, our city council, our county officials. Uh, our school leaders, we need to pray for them that God would give them uh, sanctified wisdom and how, how to lead us. So we pray for them, pray for our military, uh, pray for our missionaries. And then the E is encouragement. Uh, we are to be a people of courage, church family. And our courage comes from our hope in the Lord. I think working through a psalm like Psalm 33 is something that encourages us so that we who are now encouraged can look to be encouragers of others. We want to be that kind of people to our neighbor, to our church family members, and to our community. So H-O-P-E, health, opportunities, people, and encouragement. So with that in mind, would you join me? And we'll pray together. Uh, there may be other uh, uh, specifics under those letters that you want to pray for. Feel free to, to pause this at any time and just pray under H-O-P-E, however you'd like, but I'll lead us now uh, through those through those lines. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word that rings so true to our hearts today. Uh, thank you, Father, that, that our hope is not in the things of men, but our hope is in you. And once again, we praise and glorify you that you are sovereign, that you are enthroned, that you are in charge, uh, Lord, when you speak and act, all things are firm and sure. Our plans, our activities are, are feeble and flimsy, but Lord, we can trust and put our full confidence and hope in you. So Lord, as we pray uh, through these reminders, we first of all uh, pray for the health of our nation, Lord. We pray for the health of our community. We know many are sick here in our, in our state, and we pray for them. We, Lord, we long to see these people made whole and well. And Lord, we believe that you are the great physician. You are the one who heals our diseases. And so we ask you for that, Lord. And we ask that you would bring us soon and ready in to this pandemic. Lord, we pray for, for continued health for, for those who are not sick. We know that our health is a gift from you. And Lord, we pray for the ongoing health of our, of our medical professionals as they take care of those who are sick, Lord. So uh, we pray for those. And we pray for anybody else, Lord, at this time that we know that has a health need, and we lift them to you. We pray for you to be glorified in their lives. Next, Lord, we, we're reminded of opportunities. Uh, times like this give us multiple opportunities to serve, to love our neighbor in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for the food ministry that's going on in our community, the opportunity we've had to give to that. We pray that as these children receive this food in Jesus' name, they would know that, that their love, that you love them. Lord, make us keenly aware of our neighbors, of opportunities right here in Headland where we can step up and meet a need. Uh, help us to be, remember our senior adults, Lord. Many of them are quarantined. There's no one able to visit them, but maybe some of us could go by and knock on their window or call them and, and just love on them. Lord, show us needs of, of our neighbors, uh, with, with child care or bringing groceries, and may we be the hands and feet of Jesus, Lord. Uh, reveal those opportunities, and Lord, give us the courage and the boldness to 
be helpful in meeting them. And then, Lord, people, particularly the people who are leading us. Lord, we pray for our president, our vice president, for this coronavirus task force that our president has assembled for these skilled and knowledgeable men and women. Continue to guide their steps, Lord. Uh, we put our hope in you, but we thank you for them and for what they're doing, and we pray they would look to you. Lord, we, we pray for our, our state leaders and our local leaders. We pray for our missionaries, Lord, particularly in difficult places. Uh, keep them safe, Lord, but also use them to minister to people where health care is, is not what like what we have. Uh, we just thank you for the people in our lives, Lord, and uh, we would just pray even now, Lord, for our, our brother uh, Bill Samuel's family. Lord, we, we love them because we loved him so much, and we thank you that he's with you and uh, that he is whole and happy and home with you. But we just pray for his family, uh, his brothers, uh, his son, and uh, sisters-in-law, just commit them to you. And then, Lord, just this matter of encouragement. Lord, our encouragement, our courage comes from you. We can lean on you. We can trust in you. You are so reliable. We praise you for that. So, Lord, as we're encouraged, help us to be a people of encouragement. Help us to, to speak into people's lives words of hope and life. Give us opportunities, Lord, to speak the gospel of Jesus, to tell people that God loves them and that Jesus saves. And Lord, help us to be people who, who brighten others' days with our, with our hands, with our, with our smiles, with our feet, with our service, with our lips. Lord, we want to be an encouragement in our community. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of prayer. We thank you for how this crisis has brought us together and focused upon you. And we're so thankful that we can be a praying church. And may all of us continue to pray for your glory uh, as we walk through this with you. And we trust you and find all our hope in you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So church family, thanks for joining us for this Wednesday devotional and prayer time. I hope it's been meaningful to you. We encourage you to just to stay, stay in touch with us through Facebook. Remember to share these posts. And we'll look forward to talking to you again soon. God bless. We love you.